Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Geva, and today we're going to be talking about bariatric surgery, what to expect at the time of your surgery. So the things to bring with you on the day of surgery, uh, your medications, bring your bariatric Bible, so that's that book we give you at your first office appointment explaining kind of everything relating to your surgery. Bring a photo ID and your insurance card, because they're going to want to take that at intake. Uh, if you use a CPAP machine, bring your own. They do have them available at the hospital, but it's much easier if you bring yours because you're more comfortable with it and it's already got your settings programmed into it. Uh, bring a comfortable robe and a pair of slippers. Bring personal toiletries. Bring pen and paper to write down questions. And I say this because every time when I walk in the morning after, patients will tell me, you know, I had five questions and I can't remember a single one of them. But if you write them down, you'll never forget them. And then finally, bring something to uh, entertain yourself. So the day of surgery, you're gonna arrive at the hospital about two hours before your scheduled surgery time. And the reason for that is you need to get checked in. So the nurses are gonna go over some of your history with you, they're gonna place IVs, the anesthesiologist will come by and see you and they'll discuss the risks of general anesthesia. Um, if you are anxious, this is the, the right time to speak up and tell your anesthesiologist about it because they can give you something to kind of calm those nerves down a little bit. Uh, and the other thing I tell patients is be prepared to wait. So surgery is kind of like flights, you know, they're on time or they're running late. They're very, very rarely early. So you may have to wait a little bit until they turn the room over or get everything ready. Uh, that doesn't mean anything is necessarily going wrong. It's just kind of a normal expectation to have. The good news is that your family can join you in, in the preoperative area. Once that time for surgery comes, uh, they're going to wheel you into the operating room. And you're going to notice a number of people in that room. You're going to see the anesthesiologist. There's usually a circulating nurse. Uh, there's a scrub tech, which is someone who scrubs in with me and helps by giving me the instruments I need. You may see a surgical assistant, depending on what surgery we're doing. Uh, you're going to find your surgeon, myself or, uh, or my partner. And sometimes you might see a medical student, a nursing student, or a resident. Uh, they are there to observe and to learn. They're not actually taking an active part in your surgery. And at that point, the anesthesiologist is going to put you to sleep. You're not going to remember anything from that point until you wake up uh, in the uh, post-op area. So immediately after surgery, you're going to wake up in what we call the PACU or the recovery area. Uh, we're going to focus on a number of things here. The first is pain control. I want to set realistic expectations. We can't make all the pain go away. Our goal is to make you feel comfortable. Get the pain to a tolerable state. Um, there is going to be some pain after surgery. When we figure out painless surgery, we'll implement it, but until then, expect a little bit of pain at least. Um, you may experience some nausea as well. Up to 50% of patients who have bariatric surgery have a decent amount of that. And again, our job is to keep that comfortable and to keep preventing you from retching or gagging after surgery. Obviously, for both of these, we're going to give you medications to keep both as tolerable as humanly possible. But it is reasonable to expect to have a little bit or a lot of both of them immediately when you wake up. Post-op day zero, or what we mean by that is the day of surgery after you wake up from uh, everything, you'll eventually make it to um, your room from the recovery area. You're going to have a nasal cannula, which is a little nose hose. That's there to give you oxygen. Uh, usually within that first night, we take that off once we know that you're breathing well enough on your own. Uh, you can have ice chips and small amount of liquids. Mostly that's for comfort. The expectation is also that once you make it to your room, you make it up and out of bed. Now, I don't necessarily mean that you have to walk around and do laps, but at least that, you know, first day out of bed and into a chair, if at all possible. If you can walk around a little bit, that's great, but at least into a chair. Uh, you're going to be given a medication called Lobinox. So this is a blood thinner that's given to help prevent blood clots. Just having surgery raises your risk for blood clots. Morbid obesity raises that risk. So we don't want you forming a blood clot in your leg or heaven forbid going up into your lungs, which is why we give you this medication routinely after surgery. Uh, if you normally use a CPAP ma machine, we will have you use it overnight as well. Pain medications, you're gonna be on a number of scheduled pain medications. And what I mean by that is whenever a certain set time happens, you're gonna get that medication whether you ask for it or not. Uh, these include Toradol, which is an IV uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent. I like to tell people that it's like super-powered ibuprofen or Advil. Uh, and the other one you're going to be on is Ofermev, which is basically an IV form of Tylenol. Both of these are there to keep that pain as, as low as possible. But if they're not cutting it, we do also have what we call PRN medications. These are as needed. So if you feel like the pain control isn't quite where it should be, these are the ones you ask your nurse for. 
Uh, normally these include oxycodone, which is a narcotic medication taken by mouth. It lasts about four hours and it's pretty good for long-term pain uh, control. But if it's not cutting it, if you need immediate relief, we also usually have Dilaudid available. Uh, it's kind of like its IV cousin. It provides very fast relief, it just doesn't last quite as long. As far as nausea medication goes, as I mentioned, about 50% of patients have significant nausea after bariatric surgery. Uh, we give almost everyone a scopolamine patch, so if you've ever seen a patch for motion sickness, it goes right behind the ear. That's what we're going to be placing there as well. Uh, and then if you need anything beyond that, we usually give what we call Zofran uh, through the IV. The first day after surgery, we get an upper GI study on everybody. So this is a special x-ray study where they make you swallow some contrast and then we take a movie using x-rays to make sure everything is passing through as it should. Um, depending on how that looks, if it looks good, then we start you on the bariatric clear liquid diet that first day. Uh, so this is sugar-free popsicles, jello, broth, things like that. Then walking. I'm going to tell you walking is about the most important thing you can do while you're in the hospital. First of all, it helps with the pain control. It helps with pain relief. It helps prevent blood clots. It speeds up your recovery. The more you walk, the faster you recover. Uh, we tell patients you can shower if you'd like, but that first day and at least until your, your incisions have healed up uh, in that first month, I tell patients let the water run down your body, lightly soap up, let the water run down again and then pat everything dry. You don't want to be rubbing around your incisions so that none of them open up. Now, we are going to restart some of your medications on this day, kind of depending on what is appropriate. Uh, and then depending on how you feel, some patients feel well enough to go home this day. Uh, that is an option if you're doing everything we need you to do. And what that means is you're taking in enough water to keep yourself hydrated, you're walking around, your pain's under control, your nausea's under control, and you feel like you're ready to go. So the second day after surgery, uh, we start the bariatric full liquid diet. So that's the diet you're going to be on when you go home, and we do cover what that is in another video. Uh, again, it's going to be a lot more walking, and most patients who are still in the hospital tend to go home on this day. When you go home, you're going to have a prescription for Lovenox. That's that blood thinner we talked about, and you're going to be taking that for two weeks to keep that risk of blood clots as low as possible. You're going to get a prescription for Zofran, that's the nausea medication you were receiving in the hospital. You're going to have a prescription for Norco as well. Now, that's an opioid cousin of oxycodone. That's when you take as needed. Most patients say they do pretty well just with over-the-counter Tylenol. The Norco is there if you feel like the Tylenol is not cutting it. Uh, the thing I will tell you is never take the two of them together. So if you've taken Tylenol, wait at least four hours until you take the Norco and vice versa. Okay? You're also going to be on Protonix, which is a heartburn medication. You're going to be on this for at least six months after surgery, and the reasons are twofold. It depends on what surgery you had specifically. If you've had the, uh, the gastric bypass, that's there to promote healing and kind of decrease stress on the system overall. If you've had the sleeve, there is a risk for um, a significant heartburn, at least initially after surgery, when everything's still kind of swollen from surgery. So that's there to decrease that risk as well. Uh, if you have a history of gallstones, as we talked about in another video, you're going to be given a prescription for a uh, medication called Actigal for six months, and that's to decrease the risk of those gallstones getting any bigger and of you having a gallbladder attack during those first six months. As always, I encourage you to connect with us on Facebook at Alon M. Geva MD or at Akari SC, or you can find us on Instagram at Your Dream Body. If you're interested in learning more about bariatric surgery or finding out if it's the right option for you, schedule your appointment with us today.